Hey there, I am uh, Brian Douglas and I am here in my garage to talk to you about the Jamstack and how to make Jamstack websites. So before we jump right in and I tell you how to build a Jamstack app, I want to actually show you what we're actually building. So what we're looking at here is just a simple uh, restaurant website that has the basics of what you would see in a restaurant. Um, one being in a menu. So we've got a basic menu. Here you can see different types of menu. We've got a lunch. We've got a dinner section. We've got prices on the right. It's very fancy. That's why we don't see any dollar symbols. Um, that's how you know how, how upscale this restaurant is. Um, in addition to that, we've got a drinks menu, which you can see here, as well as a, a simple about page. So all just simple routing. So if you're very familiar with like uh, modern web technologies and frameworks, uh, routing is always built in. So we'll talk about how to do that in the jam. And then in addition to that, we've got a simple gallery where we can show off some different images. And then finally, we'll have a form where you can actually submit reservations. So now we're gonna move over to showing you how to clone this site, as well as talking more about what Jamstack is. So I'm gonna give you a one-time gift and that's pretty much all of the code in, for this repository. Now, if you look in the description of this video, there's a link. And if you click that, you'll be able to clone a version of this tasty tutorial. You could also visit bit.ly slash taste the tutorial. Either of those two links will actually take you to this page, which is gonna be a wizard on netlify.com. Granting access to your GitHub account will allow you to create a new repository based on the template that I provided. Here you can change the name or you can leave it as the same. Since I already have a version of this already saved, I'm gonna go ahead and change the name. And once you click save and deploy, it will then bring you to a screen where it starts to build your site for you. So once your site's built, you'll see a screen just like this, which is a Netlify dashboard. And here you can see one thing I wanna point out, which is the URL of where your repository was created. Now this is gonna be your GitHub account that you connected to Netlify. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you to go ahead and click that link and it should open a GitHub repo with that code. This is a repository that includes all the code you need but also includes a readme with more instructions on how to get this started. So if you get stuck at any time, you can actually check out my repository at github.com slash bduggy slash Hugo restaurant tutorial. Here you'll see the same code that you see in the repo that you, you cloned except that now we'll have some branches where you can actually see the solutions to each step. So if you do get stuck, all the code's gonna be available here for you to look at. So feel free to leverage this if you, if you aren't able to follow along or if there's an error that you cannot get past. So that you have your own version. You just wanna go ahead and clone this repo and go ahead and take that repo URL and clone it on the command line. Now, once that's done, you can go into your repository and as outlined in the readme, you want to do two things, npm install, and then finally, npm start. Running npm start will just go ahead and compile everything into a bundle and load your very own version of Tastylix for you to view. This tutorial is actually going to be based on the static site generator, Hugo. And based on statistics from staticgen.com, Hugo is the second most popular static site generator. And it actually has a pretty strong engineering culture and community around it supporting it. Now this tutorial also will be based on Hugo, but it's gonna be based on a Hugo boilerplate that also adds an asset pipeline. So if you're familiar with either the Rails asset pipeline or you're comfortable with NPM and node packages, you will find yourself right at home with the stack state generator, which is Vic Victor Hugo, which adds NPM, post CSS, and a bit of Webpack to your pipeline to be able to manage dependencies. Now, once you have cloned the restaurant template that we'll be focused on, you will need to install Hugo. And if you are on a Mac, you can do that by brew install Hugo. And if you're not on a Mac, you can visit the Hugo installing guide to find out how to install Hugo either on Linux or Windows systems as well. Now, if you get stuck installing Hugo, uh, 
please feel free to check out the the forums for Higo, which will be discourse.gohigo.io. Um, here is a pretty thriving community that will actually be more than happy to help and assist on getting your environment set up as well. You can also reach out to me directly or check out in the comments of this video. So I mentioned earlier in this video that I was going to explain what the Jamstack is, and I'm going to go ahead and default to what the Jamstack org already says. Uh, Jamstack consists a, a, a way to describe modern web development architectures where it's based on client-side JavaScript and then reusable APIs. And all that information can be found more about the Jamstack from jamstack.org, um, where we actually have uh, different examples as well as some resources to, if you're in interested in finding out more about use cases and how other people are contributing to the jam architecture. But I do want to take a chance to explain a little more in depth of how we got here. And so basically what we're looking at here is just the, this normal website architecture. So we have a client and then you have a server and that server usually is not as simple as what, what we see uh, more, the server normally looks like more of like a monolithic application structure. So not only do you have your, what you see on the browser, which is the client, but underneath, under the hood, you have like a web server, an app server, or API server, as well as like a database. And because of that, all that content actually walks around with you whenever you go to host or deploy your site to the web so people can actually view it. And I always like to use this, this uh, analogy of monolithic architectures like this. So back in the day when I was a kid, uh, which they actually still sell this in the actual stores, but they have the idea of putting peanut butter and jelly in the same jar. Uh, this was actually pretty cool when I was a kid. Uh, but it, at the end of the day, it didn't really work out very well uh, because sometimes you only want jelly and sometimes you only want peanut butter. Uh, but in this instance, you have to take both of them in one big scoop. So when you go to deploy a monolithic architectured site, you have to deploy everything all together. So then you have all these one-click solutions that have done really well, but we found out really quickly those have become really expensive. So pushing the analogy even further, I'm separating the two ideas of APIs or backends to separate that from your front end, which is your client. So in essence, this is what the jam is all about. Separating your client from your API or your front end from your back end. And what's really made this real easy uh, for modern sites that are built on JavaScript or e even other languages is that we've had a, a insurgence of all these JavaScript build tools. So we had Grunt, Gulp, Browserify, uh, NPM now has kind of taken over as far as the scripting um, build tool of choice, and then also Webpack as well. All these build tools are making it easy for us to bundle our JavaScript node apps into something that can actually be hosted easily through static. Which brings me to the static site generators. So now we're getting more of searches and static site generators. Uh, back in the day, we only had a handful. Now we have tons, um, as we saw earlier in staticgen.com. Um, Hugo is number two, but Number one is Jekyll, and then Gatsby and Middleman are both um, very, very popular in the space, as well as a, a whole slew of other ones. And what they do is they take what we're very used to uh, having the command line interfaces and the interactions and build sites really quickly, uh, but we could also take that, that complicated setup and then bundle that into a static output. So we have an index of HTML that can be hosted easily on a CDN on multiple servers on the web uh, without the heavy weight of a a database or a backend following it around. Uh, instead, we, we would talk to an API directly to gather our data. All that to be said is that the site that we're building is gonna have a pre-built structure. So we are gonna do, do complicated things. We are gonna talk to microservices and third parties uh, solutions to do some of these uh, nice features that we want in our restaurant app. Uh, but we're gonna have a, the idea of a pre-built structure. So every time we push to Git, we get the idea of having continuous delivery. And it goes straight to our CDN, which uh, for this example, it's gonna be Netlify. So we can continue to push uh, on a regular basis and update and see those updates happen live without the need of keeping our database in sync or keeping our app server in sync at, at all. And the whole purpose of this video series is actually to show you how you can build modern websites and web apps on a structure 
where there's not actually a strong tie to backends and databases. So I hope you enjoy, and I hope you got a, a better understanding of what the Jamstack architecture is. Hugo and other static site generators, for the most part, use Markdown as the basics for rendering dynamic content on the page. With this project, nothing's really different. We have a menu that lists a bunch of food items, and we want to render that same content on our page. The problem at the moment is that our version of site does not have any sort of menu whatsoever. So I can't go to slash food and see any food items because we haven't set that up yet. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And that'll be the first thing we'll tackle. And if, if you haven't gone to the, the readme yet, uh, you will need to npm install. So once you've installed the packages using npm, you can go ahead and run npm start to actually run a live version of your site to view. Now we're using a, a tool called browser sync, so it should open up the browser for you and you should see the live site ready to go. So open up your text editor and find, you could find that this, the, the structure of the code is actually laid out pretty nicely. Uh, the project itself, most of what we're gonna be doing is actually gonna be in the site folder. That's gonna be our content for food and et cetera. Uh, the source folder is gonna have your CSS, your JavaScript, images, and the, the main video that you see on the back uh, of the homepage that's gonna be living here. Images are already be set up here. And for the most part, the CSS is already, dealt for, uh, already done for you. So you don't need to actually do any CSS in this tutorial. So the config.toml is a place to tap into the menu system that we want to add to. Now, if you're unfamiliar with TOML, TOML stands for Tom's Obvious Markup Language. It was created by the creator of Jekyll, another static site generator that's uh, very useful. All you need to know is that our menu is going to be edited here. So what I want to do is create a new route. So I'm just going to copy exactly what we already have here. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this weight is two. So that way I'll have the about link, but also have a link for our food route. Since I have this live updating in the background, we can now see that we have food working as a route. But when I go to this route, nothing renders. And the problem is we don't have anything in the food content um, structure. So if I go back to our code, I'll need to actually go into our site directory and I'll need to go into content. And then here, we'll need to create one folder and make call it food. So I am personally using Vim, so I can do this straight from my Vim editor. Uh, if you're using Atom or Sublime or something similar, like Visual Studio Code, um, just go ahead and create a folder in this directory called food. Now that I have a food directory, I can now create my first food item. Now each item in the in the the content structure is going to be a markdown file. And there's this concept within static site generation which is called front matter. And in this front matter we can actually denote uh details like date, um different things like categories, which I want to distinguish just to be lunch. Um and also have different types like roles. Um all this information is going to be available to you in the the actual description of the video. So if you do want to copy and paste that, feel free. If you want to switch things up, also feel free to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and save our content as is, just by filling out this front matter and between the, the triple dashes, we should be good to go to see our first food item available for us to view. So if I now click food, I realize I still don't see anything. And that's because I'll need to update our static site generator to understand that there's some changes available. So I just went ahead and killed our server and I'm gonna restart that for us. So we can now see our first food item available for us. Now go ahead and, and go th back through this and see if you can now add a couple more food items. So instead of just lunch, I would go ahead and add some dinner items as well. Uh, in addition, you could also create some different unique choices and descriptions and pricing. So take a crack at, it, at that and I will show you how to make this process of adding new food items much easier using a content management system, which is gonna be our CMS in our next video. So 
Adding the ability to update food on the menu dynamically was pretty straightforward, but maintaining updates to the menu will probably get t pretty tedious, as you probably have discovered firsthand. So thinking of a head chef or a kitchen manager who needs to make updates on the menu on a daily basis, they would need to either clone the repository locally or log into GitHub to make changes. And chances of that actually happening on a customer's end is probably pretty slim. So with the current state of the project, all changes have to grow through a web developer. So there's a lot of solutions to handle management of contents. And since we're already on the Netlify train and deploying our site there, I'm going to recommend us use the Netlify CMS. To get the CMS connected, you'll have to do just a couple things. Inside your project folder, you'll need to go to site and then the static folder. And inside here, you'll need to add a new folder, which will call, be called admin. Once you create a new admin folder, you wanna create two new files and that'll be the config.yaml which is gonna be different than our config.toml file for Hugo, this config.yaml is gonna be very specific to the CMS. And then you also wanna add an index.html. The contents of the config.yaml and the index.html are both available here under the Netlify documentation, under the quick start tab, and then under configuration. Now that we have the index.html, I want you to first copy over the contents from the documentation into here, so that way it looks for, like so. Now back in your config.yaml, I'll break this down line by line. So this YAML file actually looks very similar to what's in the example on the documentation uh, with some changes. Uh, but line by line, I'm gonna break it down like so. Um, here is a section that's to tell us what backend we wanna use. By default, Netlify CMS works with GitHub out of the box. We're actively working on other solutions, but for now we're gonna use GitHub and I'm gonna point it to my repository, which is gonna be my name slash the name of my repo. It also wants to know what the base branch is gonna be. Now the CMS will work on any branch um, that you choose here. So you, you wanna to check to see whatever branch you want your live code to go to. Um, so this could be any like demo or staging. Um, my preference is master, I'm gonna set, set this to be master here. Now the media folder we're gonna use for a future video, but we're gonna set this now uh, just in preparation because the CMS requires you set a meter folder for any images that you want to save through the CMS. And since I already know I'm going to use that, I'm going to set it for that. And then finally, we're just going to add collections. Now, each collection is actually separated with this hyphen. And so I can have future collections, hint, hint. We can also have like a drink menu or we can have some sort of dessert menu as well. Um, but for now, we're just going to have a, a general food menu. And we're gonna set these labels. Now these labels are not gonna be um, set outside of the CMS. You won't see the you won't see the label food item outside the CMS, but this is for the CMS to be able to present it um, visually. And if you also note site content food is where we saved all our previous food items with their detailed front matter. And this gives us rights to be able to save. And then finally, looking here, these fields here all mimic exactly what we have in our front matter. So these fields are looking directly at that front matter and being able to save. And one thing to note as well is that for supported meals, we've got two default options, one being lunch, the other one being dinner. Uh, and this is gonna be based on a widget. So widgets are something you can look up and that we'll actually get in more detail in a future uh, video. But just note that widgets are different types. So we do have a widget for string, list, and text. So those are the three ones we're gonna be using for now. So I'm gonna show you exactly what the front matter looks like today, which here for our oysters, we do have date, which we're actually ignoring in the CMS, though it is something that does get saved every time a markdown file gets saved. Uh, but you can also note that we do have categories for lunch and dinner. We do have types, which type is here, but the label is here. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Uh, but for now, go ahead and commit your changes to the CMS. So go ahead and pause the video, make sure you have your config that matches pretty close to what I have here and commit that to your master branch. And I'll meet you back in a few seconds 
at the Netlify dashboard. Now back in my Netlify dashboard, I can now visit the Access tab to add an install provider. We can do that from our GitHub profile by going to our profile picture up there, clicking Settings, and down here where it says OAuth Applications, you want to register a new application. Now I've already done so here, which is providing me a client ID and a secret, a client secret. Now be careful not to share these secrets, but go ahead and take that client ID and bring that back to Netlify. Now back at the dashboard, I can now install my provider based on my client ID and my secret. And now back on my live site, instead of adding all my content locally within my text editor, I can actually now go to slash admin, log in via GitHub, and I can view my CMS. Now having a CMS to be able to edit the food menu is great, but it's almost pretty limited to only have a food menu. Now, based on everything we've done so far, adding the food menu to the CMS, I want you to go ahead and do the same thing by adding a collection to your config.yaml, as well as adding a new link for drinks. And I want you to add all this content dynamically through just using the CMS. Now, if you get stuck on doing this, uh, feel free to look back at your config.yaml and your CMS, but also leverage the Netlify CMS Gitter community uh, who are ready and willing to help anybody who's looking for help with the CMS. Once you figure that, I'll see you in the next video and we'll look at the code. Now you should have your CMS that looks like this, that has food items, but also drink items available to look at and edit. And if you took some time to add some different drink items, you would have them look like this, which is very much similar to what we have already in our CMS. Now your config.yaml would only need one more collection that copies exactly what we have in our food structure. In addition to that, you did want to go ahead and go to your site and your config.toml to make sure you added drinks to the menu. So that way you actually do see it in your menu when you go to your site live. That's it. Hopefully you were able to get through that. If you weren't, uh, let us know if there's anything edge cases or also continue to hang out in the Getter community for any questions and concerns and help with your project. When looking for a restaurant to eat at, it's always nice to look at pictures of food as well as what the place actually looks like to get kind of a sense of quality and uh, if you're even gonna like it. So having some images somewhere um, is actually ideal for a restaurant site, and which is what I have here. So, so, as you can see, so as you can see, I have a carousel that I can cycle through and see different images of the restaurant and food, and then it cycles back to the front. And I also want to point out within the layouts folder, we've already been using a structure to render our content, but I didn't really talk too much about how this works. Now within Hugo, we do have a, a base layout that loads our index page, and this is where we see our video. But we also have a default layout structure, which lists all of our content. So in Hugo, they have the idea of categories, and each of these categories are separated by sections as well. Now consider sections being what we, how we outlined our content in the config.yaml. So each section being food, drinks, and also one that we haven't talked about yet, which is the about page. Each one of these sections are being separated by a conditional. So if we happen to be on that, that particular conditional, that is the section that we'll be displaying. And we're doing this logic by just doing this here, this conditional within this block. So Hugo uses a Go template rendering engine, is which is what we see within these handlebars, or if you may, the curly braces. Now I wanted to point that out because we're doing one more thing for images, which we actually, I already give you the code here. So you don't have to actually add the carousel directly to the page. 
uh, when we add our first image, it will actually automatically do this, but I don't want this to seem like magic. So I just wanted to point this out. Here's how images are being displayed on the page. And above is how food and drinks are being displayed on the page. So if you have any questions about how this works or how Hugo renders templates, uh, please check out the Hugo documentation on taxonomies as well as listing and displaying data. With that being said, let's go ahead and add some images. First thing I want to do is go ahead and add a folder within our content structure called gallery. Now, if you remember, we have the config.yaml as well within the CMS architecture. And here we can actually add another collection called gallery. And here we'll have a label called gallery image and it'll make sure to look in the folder site content gallery. So everything pretty much as straightforward as we've done before, except for one thing. If you check out here in our field type, we're using a widget called image. And this is because we're no longer just gonna have static text to add to upload an image. We're actually gonna upload an image in the CMS using their CMS image wi widget. And since we've added a gallery to our CMS, you can now see that we have a new item in our sidebar called gallery images. And here you can either use the file uploader to upload an image or you can drag the image directly onto the image widget. And now you have an image. And now I can click save and see that live on my, on my site. So now when I visit tasty.netlify.com, I'm able to visit my gallery and see that my image is already there. So there's one more thing we haven't done yet to make this restaurant app fully functional to the way I think it should be. And that's actually adding reservations. Now we created this form or I provided this form rather uh, as part of the template. Um, so I should be able to submit my name, my email, and when I would like to show up at the restaurant for my reservation. And because this is slash contact, I already know that in slash contact, there's going to be a route ready and available for me, which is why I'm going to the pages and then contact folder. So now that I'm in the contact fold, the contact markdown file, I now notice that I have a regular HTML form ready for me to update. It's also got some of the same markdown that we see on the page as well. Now you can see the only thing I've added is the Netlify tag name. All I need to do now is save that, push that back up to GitHub, which will then trigger a new deploy on Netlify and I'll be ready to submit forms. So now once I go ahead and fill out my information and hit submit, so back on my dashboard, I'll go back to the site dashboard for form handling. Now this feature is incredibly useful, but it can actually be even more useful if you check out the Netlify documentation. Netlify also has a cool feature which adds notifications to form interactions. So every time a form submission happens, you can send an email notification as well, or you can send a Slack notification. And if you already have some sort of webhook existing, you could also add a webhook to either notify through a database or through some sort of Lambda function as well. So spend some time seeing how to integrate your form notifications with the form that we've just created. I truly hope you enjoyed going through this little project of mine, uh, creating this restaurant app. I encourage you to take this same template and see if you can build another restaurant app. Uh, build a different CSS or different styling. Uh, go to restaurants in your area and see if you can apply the same sort of template to local restaurants and see if they can use a modern site without the need of servers and be able to host that for free um, using a tool like Netlify.